Hey there, Math Moment Makers. It's Kyle here for another one of our weekly YouTube videos. Uh, today, I wanna talk to you a little bit about building number sense with our students. Uh, one of the things you hear educators saying and even adults saying uh, is that, you know, kids don't know their times tables or, you know, they don't have any, you know, common numeracy sense. And, you know, this actually might be a little bit true. However, there's ways that we can help our students to build flexibility and fluency with numbers. And it doesn't have to be by rote memorization. Uh, oftentimes, you know, we, we want that instant recall that, that suggests to us that students understand how numbers work. But in reality, oftentimes they're not really sure how numbers work. They just know the answers to a bunch of different problems. So what we're going to do is we're gonna build in strategies and mathematical models in order to do this work. So today I wanna to share a resource that's going to help us out with that task right now. All right, awesome stuff. Welcome back. We are gonna be diving in to a resource that is available for you to check out. Uh, it's not right on the makemathmoments.com site, but it's actually over at mathisvisual.com. And if you head on over there, you may or may not realize this, but uh, mathisvisual.com is one of the pet projects that I've taken on over these years. It's a free site for people to use and access. And really we try to not only make mathematics visual, but we also try to emerge strategies and mathematical models that can help students build their number sense. Uh, I'm going to also pause just to mention up at the top, you see this ribbon here. Um, right now, as I record this video, we are getting ready for our virtual summit coming up in November on November 13th and 14th. You can register by going to summit dot makemathmoments.com. It's a completely free two day live virtual summit for you to check out. So make sure you go do that. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check out the Math is Visual site. If you're not sure, or you haven't been to this site before, checking out the website and seeing you've got all kinds of visual prompts that you can leverage. And of course, you can search uh, by searching in the search box, or you might, even, uh, you might even decide to just start with one, and then along the sidebar, you'll notice that uh, you know, we have tags such as algebra, number sense, fractions, and so on. So the one that I would like to dive into uh, right now with you is actually one of our more recent, um, one of our more recent Math is Visual uh, prompts that we've shared. I'm going to uh, go ahead and click on solving one step equations with context. And the intention here is for us as educators to be able to use this website and use this tool by simply playing a video. It is completely silent, but there's places where you can pause for your students to think and then share. Uh, we encourage them to share with their neighbors. We encourage them to actually model their thinking. So even though I would call this like a math talk or a number talk routine, keep in mind that we are getting students to model their thinking. It's not all about instant recall. It's not all about them doing all the work in their head. If they can, fantastic. We still wanna push students to be able to build their, um, their, their comfort and uh, their skill set with math models, okay? Because a lot of these models have legs that actually allow us to stretch well beyond the current topic. Uh, some of the topics seemingly um, pretty simple for, for some of our students. So you'll see here with this prompt, you can read through the intentionality. You'll also notice that in the intentionality that there is, um, it, you know, there's links to how you can dig deeper. So if you liked this math talk and you wanna dig deeper, you want more prompts, you can head to some of the links here, which would bring you to the math talk section of one of our problem-based units over on the Make Math Moments site. So those are there for you to check out. Um, however, here you'll see that this particular math talk is to reinforce key concepts and big ideas from uh, from uh, division, where there are two types of division. We've talked about this before, quotative and partitive division. And uh, in this particular case, we're going to be solving equations. Every time we solve an equation where there's a coefficient 
next to a variable, meaning there's a certain number of that variable, or there's a certain rate and the variable represents how many of them there are, um, we are using one of the two types of division. So let's have a look at this particular visual prompt here and let's see um, what, what we have uh, here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off my camera here for a second so you can check this out. So we have P boxes of nine muffins per box is equal to 117 muffins. Solve for P, you'll notice it says to pause the video, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Solve for P to determine the number of boxes. Okay, now let's pause here for a second from a teacher move perspective. All right, from a teacher move perspective, we have an equation, it seems like a simple equation. However, you're gonna notice that we have, uh, right here you'll see uh, right, uh, the right there, there it is, awesome. Right over there, you'll see that uh, we have P and then a nine in brackets, and that is not a, um, that is not a convention or conventional for mathematics. Usually the coefficient goes in front of the variable. However, we're intentionally placing it here because we actually want to stay consistent with this idea of the, uh, the, the first number or the first factor in a multiplication sentence, we typically call the groups. Uh, we say how many groups of a certain quota. So here we're sort of suggesting that P represents the groups. In this case, the boxes. We wanna make a clear connection here. And we want students to do this work and they can do this work in a number of different ways. Um, you'll notice that like a lot of students may not have this math fact memorized. Uh, so we're gonna have to figure out like what kind of model might we use? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna unpause this uh, video here, keep us going. Again, there's no sound for these videos. And we're going to, uh, we're going to see after students have shared out, we can then um, we can then highlight student thinking, but then we want to emerge a model. So, so, awesome. So here is our model that is coming along, fantastic. And you can see here that we are leveraging partial products. So we're getting students. Uh, or partial quotient, since it is a division problem that we're solving here. So we have students that have basically said, well, we had, know there's nine muffins here per box. Uh, 10 boxes gives me 90, that's not quite enough. I could go then and add nine, and then add nine again, and then add nine again, or I can add three boxes of nine muffins, and we see our result of 117 muffins. Now, as you can imagine, it wouldn't be too difficult for us to come up with another prompt here. However, if we head back to if we head back to the website page, you'll notice that there are actually other prompts for us available here on our Sowing Seeds Revisited Problem-Based Unit. Uh, this was taken from day five of that unit. So there's a full problem-based lesson that you can leverage. And we've simply taken some of our math talks out and shared them on the Math is Visual site. So you can head on over here and you can leverage some of the other visual math talk prompts. So there's the prompt we just explored, but there's actually other prompts that you could be exploring as well that will allow you to dive deeper. And of course, you could go all the way back to the first day of the unit to get yourself going and uh, and allow you to kind of investigate this idea further with your students. So just to give you a heads up of what the uh, second math talk prop prompt looks like, you'll see here, uh, now we have six muffins per box, which are equal to 102 muffins. And as we roll along here, again, we want students sharing their thinking with each other. You wanna be modeling this up on your whiteboard or your smart board or whatever it is, the blackboard, how, whatever you're using in your classroom. And then we have more of an animated version of how this could look to emerge the idea of the area model and partial products or partial quotients in this case, since it's a division problem that we're solving and really to enable students to empower them to be able to access these problems wherever they are along the trajectory of their algebraic thinking, 
but also from their multiplicative thinking as well. So that's it for me. Hopefully uh, this has been helpful for you and I'm hoping that uh, you'll be leveraging some of the resources from our Math is Visual website. We have content all throughout and keep in mind as well, that along the sidebar of every prompt, you'll see all kinds of different playlists for you that you can leverage. Um, so if you're looking for integers or division or counting or arrays or uh, anything that you're looking for here, we're constantly adding more and more prompts for you to leverage so that you can help build number sense, numeracy, flexibility, and really uh, just this um, this uh, the you know ability for students to feel confident with their math facts and with calculating and operating with numbers. So we'll see you next time. Again, I'm Kyle. Do us a favor, hit that like button, uh, subscribe, and leave us a comment. Let us know: Are you using math as visual? What task or prompt are you going to be trying with your class, and how did it go? All right, see you next time.